Hey, this is OXDF, and uh, today's video is a little bit different. Um, it's not going to be a CTF challenge solve or a new tool, but rather I'm just going to walk through a frustrating situation I was in um, a, week, a week or so ago. Um, I actually had to phone a friend at one point and get IPSEC on. We poked at it on a screen share for 30 minutes, and eventually he nailed it. Um, but uh, I learned I learned some stuff. Like some stuff, there was some stuff I like knew but hadn't put together, and some things I just didn't know. So um, I thought it might make a fun video to explore. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in here. Um, I've got up the mist box here from Hack the Box. You don't need to know anything about this box, or all you really need to know is I got a Windows box with a firewall. And um, because of that, I've got uh, Chisel here um, set up to give me a SOX proxy through. And so I've got a whole blog post on Chisel. I'll include that in the description. Um, but effectively, my machine is listening on localhost 1080, and it's a SOX proxy. So if I proxy things through things that are proxyable um will go the tr i can send a request it'll go through that proxy and then release out on mist and route from there and the reason that's beneficial is now i can access the stuff that's behind the firewall um to do that i'm going to use a thing called proxy chains which is um we'll get into in a minute and so we'll, we'll go back here um make myself a new window i've got a command here that we're going to start with that i was trying to run um i wanted to enumerate and i wasn't you doing mist in when this really came up in my life but um, this is a good box where I can talk about it. It's already released. Um, I want to run Certify, which is a uh, Active Directory Certificate Services enumeration and exploitation script. It's written in Python. Um, and in this case, I'm just trying to, I'm looking for vulnerable certificate templates. Um, I'm using the SVC call, CA backup user. There's their NTLM hash. Uh, the DCIP, I'm telling Certify to go talk to 192.168.100.100. If you're familiar at all with Hack the Box stuff, you'll know that's not a Hack the Box machine IP. So Right away, I'm going to have a problem. If I try to just run this command, it's going to, we can do it. It's just going to time out because my computer has no idea where to route 192.168.100.100. 100, 100. Um, that's supposed to happen. I'm not surprised by that. Uh, we'll see if this times out any second. I may just kill it. I'll kill it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run proxy chains in front. And proxy chains, uh, if I run this, if I just do dash help, does it work? Um, so basically, you give it a, um, program name and the arguments, and it's going to hijack any network requests, and it's going to send them through the SOX proxy, and then they're going to continue from there. So it allows me to run tools that are not proxy aware over a proxy. Uh, so if I run this, let's see if I go to the front proxy chains, certify this, I expect to work. And it doesn't. It's getting stuck. Um, so what's going on here? Um, we could... I'm proving it's going to time out. Yep, see there. Okay, got it. Operation timeout. Um, one thing that I spent some time with, well, initially troubleshooting this was like there's proxy chains and there's proxy chains four, which is like kind of the next generation. Um, I believe I'm running four, but if I run get up here somewhere, well, it is four. I can tell you. Um, if I run proxy chains three instead, um, I get the same timeout. So it's I spent some time at the beginning being like, oh, am I messed up in three? Should I be in four? Um, what's going on there? Uh, I uninstalled and reinstalled both a lot, but you get the same behavior here. Um, you also have the uh, Etsy proxychains.com file. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in, going on in here about whether we proxy DNS and things like that, but at the end of the day, you can see it's it's trying to do SOX 5 over localhost 1080, which is where my thing is, so that's that's all set up correctly. Um, we can, oops, I didn't, uh, we can open up Wireshark, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick any here. Normally, I tell you, you wanna pick the right interface, but I genuinely don't know where my traffic to 192.168 is going to go. So we're just going to do any, and I'm going to hit this. And you can see right away, let's see, here I have transmission. I'm trying to send from my host, that's my um, non-hack the box IP, to 192.168.100.100 on port 636, that's secure LDAP. Um, and it's making that request over and over again and getting no response. So it's not proxy, because if it was going through the proxy, I would see traffic going to localhost 1080, and then that's encrypted through the tunnel, and I wouldn't see anything else. Um, so it's clearly not using proxy chains. Uh, let's close you. So what's going on? How are we going to handle this? Um, one thing I started doing while troubleshooting, I thought, okay, what if what if it needs sudo for some reason? It shouldn't, but what if it does? And I ran this, and of course, I ran it on certify. Okay, certify not found. And if I think about it, I've just gone through, um, I've been on a big UV kick lately. UV is the best way to interact with Python tools. Um, I got a whole video and cheat sheet about it. I will link those as well in the description. Um, but I just gone through with UV and got rid of all my pipx stuff and reinstalled all my tools with uh, with UV. And if I do which certify, you'll see it's located in my home directory. So when I that's in my path, um, 
why I believe UE puts it there when you start tool installing things, or else maybe I added it. I can't remember. Um, but it's not in root's path. So when root goes to run this, it's not installed, nothing happens. Um, we could try running this with the full path. So we could say, okay, hey, root, you certainly can read into uh, my home directory. So let's go here and we run this. And lo and behold, it works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill the background this and kill it. But you can see uh, here's proxy chains telling me that it did a chain through 1080 on my side into find 192.168.636 and it connects okay. And then boom, I'm reading template information. So with sudo and the full path, it works. So I could just stop here and be done. Uh, in fact, I think I think with mist, I had certify installed globally and I just ran sudo on all my commands because I didn't want to have the time to figure it out. And I just thought that maybe that's the way it should work. Um, but recently I was like, no, I sure this is not how it should work. This is annoying. I got to figure out a better way. Um, so when I, as I was getting Ipsec on to troubleshoot and stuff and showing him this stuff, he, he said, you know, let's let's get down to something simpler. Can we just run uh, proxy chains, netcat minus ZV? We'll just like check if the port's open and not try to send data. And, uh, you know, 192.168.100.100. So, and I need a port, let's do 636. That's what we've been doing. Um, if I run this, it's going to hang and it times out again. So I'm having the exact same problem with netcat and I was having a certify, which is useful because now I know it's not just a certify problem. It's not something wrong with Python. It's not something unique about Python doesn't want to be doesn't want to be tunneled. Um, for example, Go binaries are really resistant to proxy chains. So but that's not what's happening here. Clearly netcat's not working either. Um, and again, we can just check with the sudo and boom, works right away. You can see here's uh, I'm running proxy chains three so I don't get this quite as nice a picture. Oh, it is the same one actually. Weird. I wonder why Proxy James 3 does that picture there and this picture here. Um, anyway, not in, oh, no, I'm not doing Proxy James 3. Um, but in 3, 3 gives you the, the fish picture showing it works. Um, this one shows the chain here. Regardless, it's working either way. Um, so Netcat and Python both having the same problem. Um, now, this is where eventually Ip had his revelation. I'm going to talk, there's, a, there's some information you don't have unless you are an eagle-eyed, very detail-oriented reader of my blog posts, um, which is about how I've set up my machine. Um, you've, if you read my blog post, you'll see whenever I want to get a reverse shell, I run something like this. Um, and that's going to have netcat listen on port 403, and it's going to try to catch the reverse shell. Now, how could I run this? Because listening on port 443 is not something that any process can do. Um, in fact, you have to be root or have some privilege to do so. Um, and the reason, the way, what I've done here is if I do which nc, uh, ls minus l, user bin nc, uh, ls minus l, etsy, all alternative. I'm just sort of following these symlinks through, and there's the actual binary. Uh, bin and c dot boom. So there's the binary. Um, faster way to do that, by the way, it's kind of nice to see the full path, but if I do read link uh, dash f on which netcat, um, it just follows all the links for you. So that's that's nice too. Um, okay, so if I do get cat on that, you can see there are capabilities set on this binary, and capabilities are kind of a way to say, I want I don't need this binary to run as full root, but I want it to have some privileges. So in this case, I want it to be able to bind on low services and open up raw sockets, um, which allows me to run, you know, kind of lazily uh, listen on 443 for reverse shells. Um, similarly, if I do uh, which Python, and we'll do read link dash f, which uh, I guess I can just do user bin Python, um, Python 3.12, that's my that's the binary. If I do git cap on user bin python 3.12, I have the same two capabilities on there. Which capabilities are assigned is actually irrelevant, but there are capabilities on there, and that's a really important piece of information. So it was at this point when Ip said to me, wait, don't you have Python set up to automatically listen, you know, for have capabilities to listen on low ports? And I said, yeah, and netcat too. That's really unfortunate for like the troubleshooting we've been doing because we we tried to pick different things and they both have the same thing. Um, you know, this does allow me to do things like Python minus M HTTP server 80 and just listen on 80. It's really nice. You don't have to include a port when you're trying to issue curl commands, but regardless, it's there. So you now have all the pieces of information you need to solve this puzzle. Um, I'm going to go deep. I'm going to put the pieces together. We need to understand how proxy chains works. So let's take a look at that. So which proxy chains? Um, I'm actually going to start with proxy chains four. I just have, I'm not, I'll, you can just trust me for a second that, uh, or I'm going to start with three. You can trust me for a second that that's where it's located. Um, it's a shell script. It is literally just a bash script. And so if we do vim on that, you can see this, this is proxy chains. Now that's a little bit 
um, misleading because most of the proxy chain smarts is actually in this lib proxy chains SO3. Um, but basically what we're doing is running a shell script, it prints this banner. Um, if there are no arguments, it prints a usage, which is proxy chains prog args, and it exits. Otherwise, it's going to export LD preload is equal to some stuff, and then it's going to run, and dollar sign at sign is literally just probe and everything. It, it drops off the, the, the calling binary, it's all the arguments. So it's going to run all the arguments. Um, so if I call proxy chain certify blah, 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 it's going to call certify blah, 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 blah. Um, but it's going to do so with LD preload set. LD preload is the environment variable that says, hey, system, when you load a, when you load a binary, go ahead and load this library as well into that, into that memory space. And so this lib proxy chains three or here um, is a library that effectively is like a rootkit. It's hooking all of the network related system calls and basically rewriting them so that they go through a proxy. And that, that's how proxy chains works. Now, again, this when I say this is proxy chains, really li this lib is proxy chains, but um, at the end of the day, this is the proxy chains thing I'm calling. Um, this right here, actually, I, I am 90% sure that while I was trying to troubleshoot why does it work with sudo and not, I ended up on some Stack Overflow page or Stack Exchange page that said, oh no, you gotta comment this line out and put this line here. Um, I think I should probably just undo this, but these are basically the same thing. It's not, doesn't really matter. So um, let's take a look real quick at uh, proxy chains four. Um, this one's actually an elf binary, but if we do strings on that into less, we'll see right here, LD preload. Here's lib proxy chain status. So dot four, so version four, version three, but you know, a new, a new, a new library, but basically we're doing LD preload the same way. Um, we just have a slightly more complicated usage and they've written it as a binary. Um, so lib proxy chains is using LD preload. Why would LD preload fail? For this, let's go ahead and open up the ld.so man page. And in there, if we scroll down to the ld preload section, we're going to get this. In secure execution mode, preload path names containing slashes are ignored. So already when I changed it, that would make it worse, I think. But if, well, if we're in secure execution mode. Further, shared objects are only preloaded from the standard search directories. And if they have the set user ID or like SUID mode bit enabled, which is not typical, um, we can look here at, let's just grab that. If we do an LS minus L on that star, you can see right away, the, here's both the three and four and neither of them have this SUID bit set. So neither, both, both of these will be ignored if we're, in, that if we're in secure execution mode. So what is that? Let's jump down the page a little bit, and it gives the full descriptions here, including a process with a non-root user ID executed a binary that conferred capabilities to the process. So a non-root user ID, OXDF, me, running it, uh, running a binary that conferred capabilities, there's capabilities, to the process, and that means we go to secure execution mode, which means we do not load the library, which is why proxy change just fails. Now, when I run with sudo, I'm no longer a process with a non-root user ID. Um, I'm just a process with a root user ID, so I'm not in secure execution mode, and proxy chain works fine. Um, I thought that was super interesting. Um, if you ever run proxy chains, you certainly want to be aware of this. Um, there's another tool uh, that people like to use, fake time. I don't use it very often, but if you are working with Kerberos, for example, you it's very important that your system time be the same as the um, Active Directory DC. And what I usually just do sudo ntp date and sync my VM time, but sometimes you don't have permission to do that, or you can't do that, or um, a lot of, there's some, some virtualization software that's constantly syncing the host time down to the VM. So as soon as you change it, it changes it right back. Um, fake time is really nice. It's the same kind of thing. You run fake time, you give it a timestamp, and then you run this, just like just like with proxy change, you run what you would have run. And it, but if we take a look at, so if we do uh, read link minus f, which fake time, we do uh, strings user bin fake time into less. I'm willing to bet. I didn't actually check this one ahead of time, but yeah, LD preload has the same. Is it, it, it's right here. Um, dot so yeah. So here's our lib fake time getting lo loaded right up into the process, and that's what it's going to hook the time commands and return the fake time. Um, that's it. Um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you learned something. I found this process. Uh, very frustrating at first, but once I understood it, I was kind of like, ah, all the pieces fit together. Um, where am I going to go from here? I'm probably going to stop setting capabilities on Python and Netcat and just get back to running sudo. It's not, I, I get OCD about making my command lines as short as possible so they fit in blog post terminals, but, you know, extra sudo here and there is not going to kill anything. Um, 
So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you next time.